Well, hello and welcome to another Be Hooked tutorial. And this one will be slightly different than the tutorials you're used to. And that's because in episode four of Be Hooked TV, I shared with you how I changed the width of my project based on my gauge. And I told you that I used a spreadsheet to do that, just to make things a little bit easier. So I don't have to calculate all the time, just plug it and forget it. And I asked you if that's something that you were interested in seeing and you said yes. A lot, a lot of you said yes, you wanna see how to do that. And so I'm going to show you today how to set up a spreadsheet. So you can set it and forget it. Just plug in your numbers for your gauge for whatever project you're working on. And you can make those calculations. You can make that adjustment super easy. All right, let's get to it. My name is Brittany and I'm your guide to better crochet and knitting because I believe yarn does more than make pretty things. I craft because it occupies my hands and it calms my mind. I love the process and something pretty is the result. I want that for you too. Here, we love yarn, we love to learn, and we truly believe yarn can do more for us than make pretty things. So this is what we'll be creating, a really simple spreadsheet that has two basic sections. We're gonna work with width and then just a little bonus the length as well. Now in that episode of Be Hooked TV, we talked primarily about width because that's what a lot of people like to change. And there are some additional factors that come in when talking about length. However, I wanted to include it here as well because it's worked in the same way and it's pretty helpful in a lot of cases. So this is what we're going to create. And in order to start that, you'll need to open up a clean spreadsheet. I'm using Google Sheets primarily because it syncs across multiple devices. So if I'm sitting on the couch working on a design and I need to access this information so I can make adjustments, I can do that on my phone. If I'm in my office working on that pattern, I can have access to it as well. But just know that you can use Excel for all of this and it works almost the same way. I tend to think Google Sheets is a little more simplistic than Excel totally works for me. So first we'll give this thing a name. I like to call it pattern grading because this is just one piece of that puzzle, but name it whatever makes sense to you. And then we'll head into these sections. All right, so we'll start with the width section first. We'll use three columns. So I'm gonna highlight those first three cells and merge them together because this is sort of like my title and we'll give it a name. We'll call it width. And the titles for those columns are as follows. Type in number of stitches in the first column, measures in the second column and stitches per inch in the third column. Now this will all make sense. We'll go through it after we do the setup, but for now we're just setting things up and I like to format it to make it look a little more pleasing to the eye. So I will format the title here. I'll put it in the center, bold and 14, just to make it a little bit bigger. And since these are my headings for my columns, I'm gonna do the same to them, center and bold. Now I will shuffle these around a little bit so they all sort of fit and it looks nice and tidy. And the final thing for this section is to highlight the cell that's directly below the title of your third column. This is going to be a calculation. So to remind myself of that, I like to highlight it, just a light yellow. That just tells me, hey, you don't have to type anything here. This is going to be calculated. All right, so move on to the second section for the length. We'll use three columns as well. So I'm just clicking and dragging to highlight those. And I will click to merge cells again and type in length for the title. We will label these pretty similar. The first column will be number of rows. The second column measures. And the third column is rows per inch. Do the same formatting here. Am I the only one that likes to get everything super tidy? Surely I'm not the only one. 
All right, so that's the setup for the length. The final piece of the puzzle is to highlight the cell below rows per inch. We will highlight that one to let us know that that is a calculation. Before we see how all this works, let's go ahead and input our calculations so they're saved and you never have to think about them ever again. So we'll work on the width first. Highlight that yellow cell or just click on it. And in the little bar here, we're going to type in the following equation. Equals, and then click on the cell directly below number of stitches. If yours is set up exactly like this one, it'll be cell A3. When you click on that, it'll input it into your little calculation. And then tap the forward slash button on your keyboard that's paired up there with your question mark if you're having trouble finding that and then click the cell directly below measures again if you're setting it up the same way it will be b3 so what we've done is we've told google sheets that the number to display in this cell is going to be this number divided by this number. Now when you hit enter, you're gonna get this crazy thing that says, whoa, whoa, this is, something's not right here. And that's totally fine. This is what will be displayed when you don't have any information in this cell or in this cell. Now before we run through this, let's do the calculation for length. This one looks very similar. Type the equals button on your keyboard. We'll click E3, or the cell directly below number of rows. Hit that forward slash button on your keyboard, and then click F3, the cell directly below measures. Hit enter, and again, you get that error because it says, hey, I don't have any data to make that calculation. It's totally fine. So let's take an example here. Let's say I have worked a swatch and I have counted 25 stitches in four inches. And then I'm going to, you can either hit tab or you can hit enter, it works the same way. Then that calculates 6.25 stitches per inch. And now let's say in that same swatch, and I'm totally just pulling this out of my head right now, let's say we counted 20 rows in four inches. This is not even a real gauge, but we're going with it. Hit tab, and it says there are five rows per one inch. So how would you use this? And we'll touch back to what we learned from that episode of Be Hooked TV Let's add in an extra heading here. We'll click on B5 and we'll call this desired width. That's the width that we actually want for our project or for our panel. Do a little bit of formatting again. And in the cell next to that, we'll type number of stitches. I'm gonna abbreviate this one so it all fits per panel. Now the panel could be the full project. It's really just a generalized way of saying it. Again, I'll do some formatting, center bold. And the cell below that one, the number of stitches per panel is a calculation. So I'll highlight that one. Now we'll do the same thing for the length. We will label a new heading called desired length and then number of rows per panel next to that and again that one below number rows number of rows per panel will be a calculation so I'm highlighting that yellow so let's go ahead and input the calculations for these two highlighted cells. Let's start with this one first. So the number of stitches per panel, this equation is as follows. You'll type the equal sign and 
click on B6 if you're setting it up exactly the same or just click the cell directly below your desired width heading. And then we're going to multiply. So to multiply, you want to hit Shift 8. That's going to give you the little asterisk that's telling Google Sheets to multiply here. And then we're going to click on the number of stitches per inch. That cell there, hit enter or tab, however you will. And you're going to get a zero here again, because we don't have all of the data for it to make this calculation. So let's give it some data. Let's say the desired width on your project is 30 inches. If you hit tab, it's going to tell you that you need 187 and a half stitches. Now you will have to round up or down based on your pattern repeat or that sort of thing. Obviously you can't make a half a stitch. So for me, I tend to round up for most projects, but you can certainly round down as well. It really just depends on how your multiple works out and that sort of thing. So you can make that judgment call. All right, now again, I'm going to center that because it'll drive me crazy if I don't, and we'll set up a similar calculation for the length. So again, highlight that highlighted cell by tapping on it and input the following equation. Equals the desired length, the cell directly below that, which is F6, and we're multiplying, so Shift 8, and then tap on the rows per inch calculation, that G3 cell, hit enter, and we're gonna get zero again because this cell is empty. So let's continue with our example here. We'll give it some data to play with. Let's say you're working on a square. You want the project to be 30 inches wide, but you also want it to be 30 inches long. So we'll type 30 in there hit tab or hit enter, that tells you that you need 150 rows. Now this is quite a large project. So this is probably really useful for a blanket or that sort of thing. Gotta, gotta center these real quick. So one thing I wanna point out really quick, I'm always trying to say, be careful with your rounding. We've got our calculation, we've got 25 stitches, measures four inches, and that's 6.25. Now you might think a quarter of an inch really isn't that big of a deal. And it's not in the grand scheme of things, but in the gauge world, it is a very big deal. So let's look at these numbers here and keep your eye on the number of stitches per panel. Right now we're looking at 187 stitches. We'll either round that up or round that down. We're rounding a single stitch down. Keep that in mind. Watch how that number changes as I input the number six here. Now, I don't necessarily recommend you do this. This is going to overwrite what you have for your calculation, but just for the sake of making a point, I wanna show you what it looks like if you were to round down and said, oh, six. It's, it really measures six and a quarter, but we'll just go with six. Watch how that number changes. I hit six enter 180 that dropped it down seven and a half stitches and seven and a half stitches now i'm just going to hit Control z so i get my calculation back seven and a half stitches is more than one inch so when you make rounding in your gauge it's critically important to do it at this point in the game so this and this point. It's okay to round up or down when you're talking about one row or one stitch. But because this here plays such a role in this number, you don't want to round when you're at this point. So that's just a little tidbit there just so you can see it in action why I'm always stressing that it's so important to be as exact as possible when you're taking these measurements because even a quarter of a stitch can make a big difference in the overall size of your project. Now in order to make this spreadsheet useful so that you can use it over and over when you're ready to clear things out clear out the numbers that aren't highlighted. So just tap on this, hit your backspace button, 
and we're going to delete all of these, but not delete the calculations. I mean, you can, but you'll have to type them back in. So when you close out your spreadsheet or you hit save if you're on Excel like this, it's going to look like this every single time you open up this spreadsheet. Okay, now you understand how to set up that spreadsheet. You can use it for any project moving forward. That's the really great thing about it. You set it and you forget it. So that'll wrap up this Be Hooked tutorial. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't subscribed already and you found this super helpful in some way, shape or form, I would love for you to subscribe to the show. We have Be Hooked TV coming out on Mondays this season. We've got the Saturday tutorials as well and a couple of fun Instagram things that we're playing with, that we're trying out. Speaking of Instagram, I want to say a big thank you to Jess from Asana Crafts. If you're seeing the yarn on the brain t-shirt that I'm rocking, she sent this to me because she's a listener of the podcast. She's a viewer of the channel here. And uh, thank you, Jess. Thank you. I love this t-shirt. I love it. I always have yarn on the brain. Alrighty. I'll see you next week. <laughs>